hey, let's be intelligent about this. You know, you don't go from couch to badass. You know, there's a process, there's a path, and the path is really important. The path is what gives you confidence along the way. And it's not that you crush it the entire time. It's like, okay, this was hard for me now, but it didn't kill me. I need to stimulate the body, not annihilate it. You hear all the bull about marketing every day. Make your money in your sleep. My new offer is crushing it. My guru could beat up your guru. It's time to go right to the source and get the truth about marketing. With your host, the founder of CopyChief.com, Kevin Rogers. Hey, welcome back to The Truth About Marketing. It's Kevin Rogers here. My guest today is Billy Beck III. Uh, He has been voted the world's best personal trainer and personal trainer of the year, featured in all the major muscle and fitness publications. Billy, thanks for being on with me today. Hey, thanks so much, Kevin. I really appreciate it. It's an honor and a privilege, brother. (laughs) <laughs> uh, we met a while back where we uh, worked on a project together. And I got to tell you, my favorite thing to do as a copywriter is interview the, you know, the testimonials, right? The, the best case scenario users of anybody's system or, or product. And one of the most joyful times I ever had of that was interviewing people you had worked with directly and trained. Real, true, major life transformations. And every one of these people went on and on about, you know, not just you as a trainer, but you as a person, your character, and how much you really lived everything that you teach. So I'd love to hear a little bit about, you know, what made you that way? Is <laughs> is it a natural thing? Do you have like mindset hacks that you're constantly sort of working on to keep yourself motivated? Or do you just kind of wake up Billy Beck? Uh, no, I'm human. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely human. I got to, I got to create it, um, you know, every day. But I mean, I think I was, I was fortunate in that, in that my father was special forces in Vietnam. He was, uh, mm. He would, you know, even after that, he was an athlete. So he'd work a 12 hour shift and come home and work out and run, do Ironman competitions and triathlons. Then he became a fighter. And then he was a tough man champion in his 40s. And when they said he was too old to fight because other people his age were trying to do it and get hurt, he became a professional boxer. So he just kept going. He didn't let anyone tell him what to do. Wow. But it just became like that was, there was always a way. And it's like, there was, it wasn't like, oh, I don't have enough time. I'm too tired. I saw that as a role model. And beyond that, he never got me any toys. He only got me things that sharpened me physically and mentally. So when I was 14, no, when I was four, I got my first punching bag and weight set. Mm. So, and then by the time I was like, and you know, you get me books and stuff like that. When I was like 13, I had to make a decision. And the decision was weight bench or bed. And so (laughs) there's only so much room in in my house growing up. So I slept on a weight bench for about four years. And, you know, ever since then, I've just been obsessed with, you know, helping people achieve their best body and figuring out the best way to do that. But using you really using fitness and nutrition as the pathway to living your best life rather than just getting an after picture. That's an important part of it. Mm -hmm. But the best part about it is how do you fuel yourself? Because if your body's not healthy, biochemically, it's really tough to put yourself in a positive emotional state. And I think a lot of people get caught up in the look and not really the feel because the feel is what comes first and then the look comes with consistency. Absolutely. Yeah, I I love that. It's so true. It's one of those things, it's like, I call it the hidden bonus of, you know, getting fit or even just getting physical to start, right? Uh, Is that it just makes everything better in your life. And so knowing that, and, and you know, a lot of people have reached that place, but then they kind of slip back. Seems like very common for people to go in and out of, you know, focusing on their fitness, right? Yeah. What have you identified about that that makes it a reality for people? Well, you know, that, like, let's, yeah, you're absolutely right, Kevin. It's like everybody knows what to do. They know mm. they shouldn't be eating cupcakes and sit on the couch, but they do, right? Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and but they say, I have this goal. And, I think there's a few things, but with the fitness industry as a whole, people, there's some big mistakes and some big lies. And one of them is no pain, no gain, Mm. because, you know, human beings either are all in or all out, like things that are in between people aren't really that interested in, even though that's where most people live, right? You watch a television show, it's either stuff blowing up and people are naked or (laughs) it's a cartoon, you know, there's like nothing else. That's it. Yeah. You know, and anything in between doesn't stay on the air very long. (laughs) (laughs) 
that's just human nature. But when it comes to fitness, people are watching like CrossFit competitions on ESPN and they're sitting on the couch and they say, I'm going to do CrossFit. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe those people worked out a little bit before they got there, you know? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's like, hey, let's be intelligent about this and not mm. try to be a, you know, you don't go from couch to badass. You know, there's a process, there's a path, and the path is really important. The path is what gives you confidence along the way. And it's not that you, you crush it the entire time. It's like, okay, this was hard for me now, but it didn't kill me. I need to stimulate the body, not annihilate it, not destroy myself and get an injury that's going to affect me like for the rest of my life. Yeah. And so a lot of people just go in and they go in blind. They don't take the time to study and learn. They may not get a trainer or they get a trainer and they don't do research on the trainer because you know, my friend had his cat certified as a trainer. So it's like, it doesn't because someone certified means they're good, you know, right. at the very least they got to be certified. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, to get someone to stick to it, I would say there's a couple essential things. One is you got to want it more than you possibly realize. Hmm. And when I say want something, when you want something bad, you have like a clear vision in it. And I'm, I'm sure everyone listening to this had something in their life that they wanted really bad. Maybe it was someone of the opposite sex they wanted to attract or maybe the same sex. I ain't judging. Right. And it's like, <laughs> or it's like someone that wants to get a six pack and, you know, it, or it was someone that wanted a certain job and they wouldn't stop until they got that job, and, mm-hmm. you know, but they were relentless. And there's a certain mindset that just goes with everything. Like, it's just like, I have like, it's, when people say obsession is a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing because it's what is needed yeah. to achieve the goal. Now, if you're obsessed with something that's not healthy for you or it hurts other people, then it's a bad thing. But if you're obsessed with something that makes you a better human being, right. I think that's a pretty, pretty good thing. But I would say number one out of the gates, people just take action without any intelligence. Number two is they don't want it bad enough because there's going to be a point where that motivation wears off, whatever that trigger was. It wears off. And we know that when someone buys a fitness ebook, right? It's yeah, like, oh yeah. man, I saw the, the video and now I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I got the testimony. Boom. And then, you know, they're like, I'll do it Monday and it's Thursday. And let's face it, that wore off. In those <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. And we're talking to Billy Beck the third, uh, BillyBeck.com. I love the title of your free ebook on the page here at BillyBeck.com. There are no shortcuts. That's honesty right there because, you know, there's a whole lot of this market selling shortcuts, <laughs> you know, it yeah. hacks and everything else to go, no, 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 you, you, don't, you don't have to do all that crazy hard work. But, you know, as we're kind of alluding to, like, I think the hard work is the sexy part, you know, just like yeah. I'm never happier than at the end of a, of a class or a session with my trainer, I'm laying there in a puddle of my own sweat and my body's mm-hmm. literally throbbing. I call it the throb. That's what I'm after. I want the throb, right? It's I like, love it, the throb. The throb. <laughs> the, the rest of my, because you know what? What's going to mess with me the rest of the day? <laughs> Nothing. I've, I've achieved throb. What else is there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so That's awesome. how do we get people, and again, this is a marketing show. We'll get to the marketing stuff, but I, I really yeah. believe, like like Billy said at the top, man, it's it's once you get going and you're doing this stuff and you become obsessed and you're, you're just doing a little bit every day, it, it's like my, you're probably friends with Yuri too, Yuri Elkham. I love what he says that it's progress, not perfection. You know, we look at the magazine covers and we see the models and that's what they're putting as the standard. And it seems like, how can they have, you know, 50 more moves to get the biggest biceps of your life like every other month, right? You're going, yeah, exactly. does that mean I need to know 500, you know, moves? Like, uh, it just gets overwhelming for people. Like, what's the first step somebody can take to just get moving and get those happy brain chemicals rewarding them for, for being physical? Well, you know, there's, I call it the three pillars of power because every program is based off this. And if any of the three pillars are missing, your results are going to be limited best. You're going you're gonna to hit a, a wall. And so the first one is you got to do physical training. The big mistake there is they do too much too soon. Mm. So if you're going to start in physical training and you know, you, your workout right now is running to the uh, bathroom on a, on a commercial break, then you don't need to do very much. <laughs> right. so all you got to do at first is a little bit more than your body's accustomed to, and that will be enough for a stimulus. Mm. But I would say you got to have a plan. You can't just come in and say, I'm going to start working on Monday. And they go into the gym, they get a membership, but they have no, no freaking plan. It doesn't have to be a perfect plan. Right. It needs to be, and it needs to be a beginner plan, not a crazy plan. And if you've been working out for a long time and haven't seen results and 
those are two type of pe- people I get. I get super achievers, basically people that crush it one area of their life, mm. but fitness is new and they want the best of the best. So they get me yeah. and my staff. And then it's like, okay, well, we'll help you, but we're doing it intelligently. Or we get the people that have been doing it for a long time, like a professional athlete or someone that's been working out, you know, every day, like five days a week. And, you know, and they haven't seen any change in eight years. And you're like, okay, well, we got to be more intelligent because their body's adapted to a, cer- a certain level. So I would say physical train, yeah. intelligence, and a plan, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Not craziness because you want to post something on your social media. Just lie about like everybody else. Just say you did 3,000 box jumps and burpees <laughs> uh, before you had breakfast. That's what everyone else does. I see him post it in the gym. I'm like, do you not take any pictures in here because you did not do that. That's a lie, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I love it. You're being polite, not naming exactly who we're talking about here, but you know, exactly. One of the most <laughs> popular th- trends, you know, of the last couple of years is also one of the most dangerous things you can you can do. And you're right, man. Like I love what you're saying, like start intelligently. You know, I would say baby steps, but you know, be realistic. It just takes you just start walking at night or something just to get the juices flowing, yeah. then take the next step and you don't have to like dive right into it. You will get hurt. And then you'll be laid up, you can't work out, and you'll be discouraged again. So that's a great tip, Billy. All right, let's move into more of the sort of the, the, the show side of this biz we're in. Let's uh, do it. Because I know you are one of the you know, most sought after, uh, you know, most impactful speakers you know, out there on a stage anywhere in the world. Talk to me about you know, when you first kind of transitioned onto the stage. That happened pretty early in your career or, or you know, was it you just meeting a demand or was that sort of a calculated thing? Did you go to Toastmasters and, you know, get any like mm-hmm. formal training on it? Yeah. You know what? Everyone says go to Toastmasters. I think Toastmasters is stupid. Like I, I'm yeah. just going to be honest. Yeah, like, yeah. I went to the meme and I thought, I was like, this is not where <laughs> the world's greatest speakers come. I don't care. Everyone says, I'm not going to stand up at the podium and talk and follow this thing. Cause I'm going to be like everyone else that trained. I was right. like, I want to be myself. And I felt like it was too scripted for me. And I'm sure pe- there's a, area and I, I think the people listening to your podcast are you know they they're like you and you're not like these toastmaster people no. probably you know because you're unconventional you see yeah. things that other people see but you see it differently and you can see the distinctions so like toastmasters not my thing so <laughs> i was the you know i was a trainer and i said okay like how do i help more people because my thing's always been you know i, I want to help people i want to help as many people as possible and one-on-one, I can do one-on-one, but I said, okay, how can I, I need more trainers that I can train the trainers. Mm-hmm. And then, cause I saw how terrible trainers were. So I was like, these are good people that want to do a good job, but there's just nothing out there to train them right because they're just having to memorize stuff, but you got to be able to communicate mm-hmm. and inspire someone to fall through when you're not there. And so I started doing seminars for small groups, like four to eight people. And then I said, okay, I'm going to go big time. And I, had, and I filled up the aerobics room. <laughs> I didn't think this through very well. And I just thought I'd go and talk. But 70 people showed up. There's wow. no chairs. People are sitting on the floor. And I must have said, and I'm not even kidding. Like, this is going to sound like an exaggeration, but I actually watched the video and counted it painfully. Like, I said the word, okay. Like, you know, you're like, oh, so then you, you know, work out three times a week, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Like, I'm confirming that everyone understood every <laughs> sentence I said. Like, I said it over a hundred times. Wow. But I was like a nightmare for me, like mm. the freaking just me communicating. And I decided to uh, learn. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, when I did it, <laughs> I just got a text message from one of my clients. Sorry about that. Did you, right. did you happen to hear that, Kevin? <laughs> no, I didn't hear any, any beeping okay, or buzzing. Thanks. Yeah, I want to make sure it didn't come through on your thing. Y- your ringtone is still a mystery to us. <laughs> your oh, text alert good. tone. Yeah, it's the one that never goes away. I don't know how I did that. But <laughs> the, when, I, when, I, when my speaking was calculated, but it was more like I just out of passion and serving people. So I just thought I could talk because I could talk to a couple people that yeah. I'd be good with a lot of people. Mm. And I was not. And so I started studying people that were really good speakers. And I don't mean like the guy that sells the course. I mean, like Martin Luther King Jr., John yeah. F. Kennedy. Mm. I mean, I would watch videos of them and listen to them. And I, and I studied NLP and Tony Robbins who's actually one of my clients now and good oh, friends. Awesome. Um, Great. Yeah. He, he's, uh, you know, I've got his tapes when I was like tapes too. How funny is that? When I was like 14, <laughs> yeah, so I was 14, you know, tapes. I God. sure do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until two years ago, I, I hung on to my 96 Cadillac because it had CD and tape. And it was so oh, cool no that I could st- still listen to some, some of those tapes. You can't get, they just quit making the, the series. Right. You know, 
So like those old oh, great God. like Jim Rohn and Earl Nightingale stuff, and you're like, I can't give yeah. up my tapes, man. <laughs> you can't, you can't. That was that was really tough for me, actually. <laughs> so while Tony looks damn good, so that's a great <laughs> that's a great walking testimonial. Obviously, at the top of his game and just about everything he does. But I don't know if yeah. uh, he may have gotten this from you, but I heard this credited to Tony. One of my favorite, you know, phrases sayings about fitness is that nothing tastes as good as being fit feels. Some, yeah, that, I, that, that's definitely Tony. I'm, I'm more direct. He's more um, elegant in yeah. communication. I, I'm like, don't be a bitch and do it. <laughs> that's what I say. I, I mean, that's I a better t-shirt though. <laughs> yeah, it's a great shirt. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I know you're, you're an amazing speaker. And so is that a passion of yours? You just get really juiced being up on the stage? Well, you know what? I saw the impact I could have on people and mm. it was amazing. Like I could give like every year I go to London and then next year I go to Orlando. Then I go to Sydney, Australia and I speak to all gym owners and trainers mm. and, you know, and I would just like give this presentation and, you know, and then I put a lot into it and they would like, I they would post things like the next year I'd be back and they'd be like, Oh my God, this changed. I did all this. And I was like, I talked for like two hours. That's all I did. Wow. And I, change this person's life somehow. I was like, that blows my mind. I'm like, I'm meeting with people three hours a week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So that was amazing to me. But I, you know, one thing along with speaking, like anyone listening is mm -hmm. I think the thing that I am so like, I just want to help people like everyone in the room. I think a lot of speakers, like, cause I'm at these events, whether they're speakers, I find that they're there for them and not for the person. Mm -hmm. And it comes across maybe not intentionally. And I mean, I don't think they're there like they know they're there for that, but they want to, most people, human beings have this fear of not being enough. And if they're not enough, they won't be loved and accepted. And that's in our DNA, right? So if someone says they don't have that, they, they're a liar, but uh, everyone has that. And so I find that people aren't coming there from the right place. So when you come from like, just like, Hey, if I look like a fool, that is fine. As long as I help people and deliver what they need to hear. And like, before I go on stage, you know, I, I just say, you know, I, I look up and I just say, let me be your vessel. Let me, you know, speak through me. Mm. And I'm not like a deeply religious like person where I, I bark, I bark things out at people like, Oh, you should do this. But I believe in something bigger than myself and that I, if it's just me, I'm screwed. So I need help <laughs> beyond me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know that feeling. Cool. And so, but I prepare like I, every, Kevin, everything I do, I will literally, like I will practice my entire talk like, mm. multiple, I mean like 10, 12, maybe 20 times depending on what it is. And it's not like I never, it's the first time I'm giving it. So I think preparation is huge for any, anyone who speaks. Yeah, that's good advice. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. I've seen so many uh, fitness pros, the really passionate ones become so good at marketing. And at first it used to baffle me because it seemed like a disconnect. And then I finally realized it's, you know, they're the type of people who are, when they get passionate about something are willing to get crazy dedicated to it. Right. Yeah. And being consistent and, and like it's there's a science to both things and they're big into reverse engineering the most effective things. Right. Like what's really behind Absolutely. that? Why is that working? And so whether it's nutrition, you know, if you're looking to gain muscle or if it's headlines, if you're looking to convert sales, they take that same kind of approach. And um, yeah, it's really powerful. Cool. All right. Well, let's get to the essential question of this show. I'm really fascinated to hear your answer on this. So, uh, Billy Beck the Third, what is the one thing you've done in your marketing that's produced the most surprising results? Well, this is this is interesting because I've you know taken all these marketing courses. I've read all these marketing books, and uh, you know, I would say it's something my earlier career. Like, I don't know if the listeners know, like I won the world's best personal trainer contest two years. They had it for two years. I won it both years, and I was only twenty. Four years old and then 25 years old. Wow. And then I was voted world bet or personal training year by other trainers, like, like my peers. Oh, awesome. And, and the cool thing with the contest, the contest forced me to do this. So it wasn't like my great idea, <laughs> but it was like, Hey, you, here's, you want to be the best in the world. Here's, here's the playground. You got to come in and you got to submit your clients, measure them, take their pictures. You got to prove that this is where they're starting. Then you send it all in. And so like, there's no going back. <laughs> then You document everything for 12 weeks and then you take the pictures, you take the measurements, 
you have them right there. And so like they, everything's real. You cannot cheat. So I think it was like t- over 25,000 trainers entered it and less than a thousand submitted anything. Mm. So it just shows you that a lot of people don't get results. Right. And uh, not that they don't know stuff. It's just, they can't get people to do stuff. That's the huge thing. Sure. And so the first year I did it, I thought you could, there's multiple categories. I thought you could enter one trainer. So like you're as a, you get a finalist and then they fly to California and you sit in this room. They don't tell you this. You get there and there are all the legends in your industry at a table and you're sitting at one end and they grill you. Mm. And I'm like a kid, you know, I'm just starting. But like I, I, and I think this is part of marketing too. I think this is important message is the mistake I see in every industry is people become groupies. So they're like, oh, I'm a, I learned from this guy. That's my guru you know, or this guy, and they want to debate and argue. I never argue and debate. I'm, I will ask questions and I will learn from them, even if they're, you know, half my age and just starting out because, hey, there's something I can learn there. And then, so like when they were asking me questions, I, I studied all their stuff. So I knew exactly what they, what answer they wanted. And I was mm. honest about it. I said, so, you know, Paul, you want to know this, so this is what you teach. And I found that with this client that it was really helpful. And uh, then, oh, you know, John, this is what you said. And, uh, and Michelle, yeah, this is what you would say. And I, I get that. And I kind of take from all you guys. And I really appreciate it. You know, like the, hmm. I worked a little po- like a politician there a little bit, but <laughs> it was because I believed it. It came from my art. Right. And then one of the other trainers, though, w- had two clients. And I was like, and he was Brian Champ. I remember I was like, and he, I'm still friends with him today. I go, hey, how do you think I'm more than one? He goes, yeah, you can as many as you want. I was like, really? So the next year I sent a crate. So I cr- did this Incre- the best marketing I ever did, and I've done this again and again. So I gave a seminar. I said, "Hey, I just won the world's best purse trainer contest, and it's not because of me. It's just because it's how the human body works." And so I was humble about it. And then I said, uh, "This is what I would like to do. I would like to take a group of people, and I would like to show the world that anyone can transform the body. So I'm looking for an athlete, and that was one category. I'm looking for somebody who's never worked out before. So if you have a friend or family member, I would like to work with them." I was like, and if you've been working out for a long time, but you haven't seen the results, I would like to work with you. And I just kind of named the categories without saying the categories. And so I did a seminar and I got all these people and it was like the total fat loss. Some people go to gain muscle. Uh, one woman's goal was to run a marathon. Mm. Uh, 1968, she saw the Olympics. There was a guy from some small country. He was the only representative from the country. Everyone's finished. So when the first three people are done, everyone just stops running, which blew my mind. This one person, like hours later, finishes and everyone gives this great, like a crazy ovation because it was mm. the spirit of the Olympics, right? Being demonstrated by someone. And uh, she yeah. said, and they took that. She said, I'm going to run that thing. And then she was diagnosed with diabetes later. And at the time, they said, You cannot run. And so I, she came back and she got an insulin pump and she goes, I want to run a marathon. She's like 48 years old. So I trained her. I ran with her and everything uh, for the Pittsburgh Marathon. And uh, it, that was one of the categories. So that, you know, that's you can't beat that story come on right you know so there's the story like all these marketing principles were built into one campaign mm. and i think before that i was just trying to knock people out with one punch so to speak it's like hey i got this tip or the strategy you know this little right. tactic you know and it wasn't like this one thing fed off the other and so like i did this 12-week program and i got incredible results so at the end it wasn't like okay we got it we'll send it in i before I was like, Hey, we already won. It doesn't matter what any judges say or anyone thinks. And so I went to the butcher and I got 336 pounds of fat wow. and I put it in a wheelbarrow. Cause I remember Oprah did something like that in a wagon, mm. but she gained it back. And so I, I leveraged <laughs> that. And so when people walked in, I had this huge thing of fat. It's disgusting. It smells bad, by the way. Mm. And so then there, we had the train center, there was like a four way intersection with business. So I took it down to the street corner and put up a big sign. I was like, I was like, got fat. And that's when the gut milk campaign was like big. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, and I leveraged that. And then I sent, a, I contacted all the, everyone in the press. And I just started calling people like newspapers. So I got a newspaper call from it. I got a radio show from it. I got on channel 11 news three times a day with fitness segments, real short fitness segments, all because of this. And then I ended up winning the contest too. And so I crushed awesome. it. Wow. And, yeah. And so, but the whole thing was, you know, at the core of it was getting results, having something that freaking worked and then just putting it out there with stories. So I communicated in stories, not about me, right. but in stories. And I think a lot of people are really big on proving that they're good enough to get a result where it really has very little to do. It's, it's important, but if that's all people talk about, you know, they want to know the story because they can relate to that person. No one can relate to me. I'm like, my childhood is freakish. 
You know, like I've never, like right. I've never been out of shape. You know sleeping know? on like a, a yeah, workbench. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sleep on a weight bench. I'm a freak. So I like, <laughs> can relate to that stuff. I eat Doritos and play video games. <laughs> you know, I love it though. Like, I, I think you cannot come to that realization unless you like truly care about people. And it's interesting to me how often you deflect all the things you've accomplished onto other people, whether it be your clients, your dad, you know, in the about section of your website, you just immediately talk all about your dad, right? And I tell you, that's inspiring as a father. And it's, it says a lot about your character, you know? So I appreciate you, you being on with us, Billy, billybeck.com, Billy Beck the third, greatest trainer in the world as voted by other trainers. <laughs> Trader of the year, man. I mean, that's pretty cool. Sounds pretty good. I don't know if it's true, but I'll take it. <laughs> that's marketing for you. <laughs> yeah, never deny, never correct when somebody goes over the top with your title. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, thanks so much for all you do in our industry. I know you're you're one of their good guys. And so, you know, if you are looking to get in shape or you're looking to, you know, watch a master of this industry, someone who Markets only with integrity and leads from the heart, as you can tell by listening to Billy talk today. Head over to billybeck.com, download the free ebook. There are no shortcuts. Get on his list and get, uh, get active. Thanks again, Billy. Really appreciate it. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Hey, thanks so much, Kevin. It has been a lot of fun. Anything I can do to help you, just uh, let me know, my man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, brother. We'll talk soon. Hey, thanks again for listening to the Truth About Marketing podcast. If you like this show and you think other people would like this show, the best way to spread the word is by reviewing and rating the show in iTunes. Just log in, click review, leave a big old fat five-star review, and let everybody know that you dig the show so that they can dig it too. To get all the links and resources we mentioned on today's episode, please go to copychief.com forward slash T-A-M, as in truth about marketing. And if you'd like to learn more about how you can improve your sales copy with uh, templates, formulas, coaching, feedback, or hiring a pro, do all that on the inside of the members area of copychief.com. And I will look for you there. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.